The Innovators Network. Welcome to the Killer Innovation Show, the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Each week, Phil McKinney brings you the insights and strategies to amplify your creativity and innovation skills. Here's your host, Phil McKinney. Hello, this is Phil McKinney, and welcome to today's show. This is the second part of a two part show. Last week's show was talking really about the eight leadership roadblocks to innovation. So what are the roadblocks that prevent innovation from happening? Today's show, we're going to take a look at the characteristics of successful innovation leaders. What are those characteristics of leaders of innovation that remove the roadblocks? So last week, we talked about the roadblocks. This week, we're going to dive deep into the characteristics of successful innovation leaders. And just to give you a heads up, there are nine of them that we will dive deep and share kind of my own experiences, but also things to to look for. Whether this is for you, if you're an innovation leader and you're trying to say, hey, you know, what are the things I'm really strong at? What are the things I need to work on to become an even stronger uh, innovation leader? This is the show for you. So, uh, Before we get started, got that favor to ask, can you go ahead and like, go over to the social media, find us, find me, uh, like us, follow us, um, and uh, you can also keep track of what we're we're up to, what's going on. Uh, We post a lot onto uh, LinkedIn and Instagram uh, for myself. Uh, Those are the primarily the, the two strongest. Uh, social media platforms that we spend a lot of time on and share. We also uh, will alert you when new episodes of the show are up so you can be the uh, uh, first one to hear it. Uh, also, can you share? Can you let others who you think would benefit from hearing today's show? If you're inside of an organization and you're trying to start or argue for the for the starting of an innovation team or uh, you're trying to convince your leader for you to become that new innovation leader. This is the show that you should share with them. So go ahead, share the show, let them know. This would be a great opportunity for them to hear what are those characteristics for those successful uh, innovation uh, leaders. And um, also, if you have uh, uh, thoughts on the characteristics that you're going to hear and want to let us know whether you think we're right or wrong. We're open to that. You know, just, just like we talked about um, in the past, right? We love your feedback. Uh, These are the nine characteristics that, um, you know, it's kind of common across the industry, but they're ones that I uh, believe strongly in, but you may have another set. You may have additional ones. Post your comments, come go on over to the show notes. Um, post the comments there or, or become part of the conversation on the social media platform of choice that you're on and let us know if there's something that you think we missed on these characteristics. And with that, let's hop in to this week's episode. This episode is sponsored by Zoom. With Zoom, you can streamline your communication, collaboration, and creativity all in one place. Zoom is the market-leading platform that provides video meetings, voice, webinars, and chat across desktops, phones, tablets, and conference room systems. To learn more about Zoom and sign up for your free account, visit KillerInnovations.com slash Zoom. Innovation leadership skills go beyond the basic skills associated with managing people or processes. Most management leadership uh, individuals learn those skills on the job. You start off maybe as an individual contributor, then you get promoted to maybe a manager, and then maybe a director, and then ultimately a vice president, on and on and on you go in your career. But the skills that got you to be successful, in normal uh, management, managing people, managing processes, uh, managing a facility are not the same skill sets needed for managing innovation, for leading innovation. Uh, 
what's needed is leadership styles that have to increase creativity, competency, collaboration that result in innovations that ultimately contribute to the success of the organization. And it's different. These styles, these leadership characteristics are different than what we have normally been using just for managing people. The Harvard Business Review recently published a, uh, a little blurb that I thought was uh, pretty interesting, and I'm, I've repeated it already, and I'm going to repeat it again. And the way it reads in the Harvard Business Review is, quote, a major paradox managers face is that the system that enabled success with today's model reinforced behaviors that are inconsistent with discovering tomorrow's model. They're talking about innovation. Today's rules and structures for organizations and their leadership work against innovation, right? If you're managing people, you're managing team, what do you do? You set your objectives, you set your timeline, you project manage it, you make sure that you know, if they say you're, they're going to deliver, you know, this widget by December 1st, you make sure it's delivered by December 1st. All of these kinds of rigor and uh, process and activity management and uh, uh, top down, you know, some would say micromanagement are all things that work against innovation. That's not the management structure or style that's needed in order to be successful in the form of innovation. So, so what are you to do? If you're a leader, an innovation leader, what is it that you are supposed to do? Well, one is appoint a leader who has the characteristics to lead your innovation effort. Find people whose just ability, skills, things they've learned match against these characteristics that we're going to talk about. And then two, support them. Support them with resources, people, time, and money. And then let them show you what they are capable of doing. Now, if you want to be that leader, if you want to be leading the innovation, or you're already leading the innovation effort within your organization, is, is show these characteristics. Exhibit these characteristics to your leaders. And don't be afraid to ask for the support, the resources, the people, time, and money. And as we talk through these characteristics, look at yourself realistically. What is it that you are naturally skilled and able to do? And what are those things that yeah, you maybe need to work on a little bit? Okay. So what are these leadership characteristics? What are these things that are needed in leaders? to support or enable innovation. Number one, and this is by far probably the biggest one of the nine, and that is comfortable with risk. Innovation is synonymous with creativity, which involves a great deal of risk. An innovation leader must have that tolerance for risk. No, you're not always comfortable with risk, but you got to have a tolerance for risk and have the clarity of thought to the possible outcomes so that you can make the best decision. You know, any, on any given innovation project, there's multiple decision points. There's multiple risk paths you can take. As a leader, you've got to be comfortable with risk. You've got to be tolerant of risk, you know, and how the, that makes you feel. And you have to remain with clarity of thought thinking through all the possible outcomes so that you can make the best decision. Risk is scary. There's people within your organization whose sole job is to minimize risk. Typically, that's the lawyers <laughs> and the, uh, the finance team, right? Finance team, they don't want to risk all the money. They don't want to risk the, the survival of the organization. Legal, they don't want to get caught up in doing something that gets everybody into trouble. Right? So you have some people within your organization whose mission is to minimize risk. As an innovation leader, you're taking the risk. You have to get comfortable with the risk. You have to have that tolerance for that risk. While at the same time, and I'm emphasizing this yet, yet again, at the same time, you have to maintain clarity of thought. 
You have to think through all the possible outcomes and all the risks associated with those outcomes to make the best decision. And if your decision path is always take the least risk, don't don't get involved in innovation. That is not the the, the game for you. If you take the conservative, we 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 are a zero risk innovation effort. You are never going to find those innovations that could be transformative to your organization. You have to take risk. You have to be willing to to go out there and try something and be willing to get comfortable with the risk that's involved. So again, number one characteristics of innovation leaders, and that is getting comfortable with risk. Number two, expertise. Leaders must have the required expertise to communicate effectively uh, with the team. They have to be able to convey a vision in whatever area they're focused in on. They have to understand the inherent risks because they're familiar with the subject matter. And they have to have the advantages of creative ideas and also command respect for the team. There's been a big discussion in the innovation game with regards to do you really need subject matter expertise or do you just need really good management leadership skills? And I've been doing a a bunch of uh, interviews with innovation leaders. Um, around a whole variety of different companies, part of the work uh, underway on book two, and the uniform and I and I have to agree with them. The kind of the universal uh, view is is that yes, you have to have the expertise. Professional leadership that doesn't have industry or technical expertise is incredibly tough. Hard to push, knowing when to push on certain decisions, when to. Uh, balance off the risks, those types of things without having some level of expertise. Now, you can learn this expertise on the job, but you have to have some kind of fundamental place to start from, right? So having that expertise. Number three, humility. When team members come up with a new idea, the innovation leader has to be receptive and completely open to exploring the idea. I've talked many times about what I call the innovation antibodies. I spent an entire chapter talking about it in my first book, Beyond the Obvious. Innovation antibodies fall into a couple different categories. One of those categories is the ego antibody. This is the person who thinks it's their job to come up with the ideas. It's their job based on their title, et cetera, that people are looking to them to be the ones that come up with the ideas. This is where it's this humility plays in. You've got to let go. You can't be the person with the idea. You need to be open that when somebody else comes up with the idea, you're willing to embrace it. Someone with an ego innovation antibody is going to push back. They're going to Say they're going to find 5,000 reasons why that idea will never work, never get funded, never move forward. And they're basically just dumping on the the person who came up with the idea to the point that that person finally goes away, walks away. And the person who's the antibody does no longer feels threatened. You need to get comfortable. You do not, you should not feel threatened when somebody comes up with that new idea. You need to be humble. You need to be receptive. You need to be completely open to exploring whatever ideas someone on the team proposes. This openness and this humility to new ideas, even radical ones, will significantly contribute to the creation of a highly innovative climate, a culture within your organization. And that's the ultimate objective. You almost have to go overboard. If you're building a new team, if your organization is new to trying to establish their innovation efforts, in this case of the humility, you almost have to go overboard. It's not about who gets credit. It is about everybody's ideas are are welcomed. Everybody's ideas are valued. I, as a leader for the innovation effort, I am looking and want to support and encourage Working on your idea, you know, and helping you be successful 
with your idea. Humility. Finding somebody that's got that level of humility, who has also had some innovation success, hard to find, critical though for success. Number four, low anxiety. A person who's constantly feeling stressed about every little thing will fail in a creative environment. People who are constantly doing the what if analysis. Well, what if we do that? That's going to fail. What if we do that? That's going to fail. Anxiety is contagious, especially if it comes from a leader. Innovation leaders typically are very low on the anxiety curve. This helps them create that environment where people feel comfortable and secure rather than anxious and fearful. If the innovation leader is constantly stressed out and shows it, then that conveys itself throughout the organization and people become fearful. You know, they want to do things to make the leader less stressful, make the leader help happy. And they're focusing on the leader rather than the innovation. As a leader, you want to bring low anxiety into your team, into your organization. This is one of those things that I had to learn. Now, I'm not a high anxious kind of a person stressing out all the time. I do come across as maybe high energy. Um, but uh, what I have found that I do is when I'm in deep in thought, I'm kind of heads down, eyes to the floor. I'm concentrating. I may have what looks like a scowl on my face as I'm walking around the office. And when I took over as the CEO, I figured out that what was happening inside the building, you know, a couple hundred staff, 80,000 square foot facility, I would walk in and depending on how I walked in that front door, word got around the building incredibly fast. Phil's happy, Phil's upset, Phil's, uh, you know, not feeling well, whatever it is. And I figured out that how I walked into the building every day set the tone for the building. As a leader, you are on stage. Your team is looking to you. They're going to sense off of you how the day is going. So I've gotten into this habit that when I pull in front of the building, I will just turn the car off and just sit in the car for two minutes. Just getting my head screwed on straight, thinking through everything that I, you know, my objectives, what is it I want to achieve for the day, et cetera. And then I put on the happy face. I put on the big smile, bright eyes, a little, little hop in the step, good energy level, get out of the car, lock my car door, walk in the front door, and I am on stage. You are on stage that entire time until you get out, get into your car, close the car door. And now you can relax and let yourself go. In the case of anxiety, it is contagious. If you are this anxious individual, that is going to be conveyed. You are on stage. So you want to be this low anxiety person. You do not want to infect it within your organization. Plus, if you're constantly stressed, innovation is stress on its own. If you're naturally anxious, if you suffer from from anxiety, these are things for you to work on if you really want to be a top-notch innovation leader. Number five, self-confidence. You need to have a high level of self-confidence. This is not arrogance. This is not ego. This we're talking about is self-confidence. In a rapidly changing field, innovation leaders are expected to deal constantly with the unknown. An innovation leader has the confidence in their ability to succeed, and they just generally hold the belief that the outcomes that they're going to be able to achieve are going to be positive. They have that vision, that hope, that energy, that confidence that they'll figure it out. They may not know the path today, but they have confidence that they'll find it, that they'll figure this out. Even when they're you know, coming face-to-face with an unbelievably long list of unknowns. So again, self-confidence, not ego, oh, I'm always right, or, uh, you know, arrogance, like, you know, I'm the expert. This is self-confidence. Not confidence you have the answer. Confidence in your own ability that you'll figure it out, that you and your team 
will figure this out. You may not know the answer, but you got that confidence that you will figure. And you convey that confidence. You bestow that confidence also onto your team. You have confidence in their abilities. And through that, they have confidence in you. Self-confidence. Number five. Number six, orient it towards action. Innovation leaders, the top innovation leaders will lean in. They will swing more towards taking action and not get hung up on what I would refer to as analysis paralysis. They will swing towards action. Now, effective innovation leaders naturally jump into the fray of action and and actively take part. Uh, They actually feel energized by the action and enjoy leading change that leads to innovation. This is actually one of the things I have to kind of tone down a little bit. I probably swing this way a little too hard. I'm more than willing to jump in. I love the the back and forth, the discussion, doing brainstorms or eva- help, you know, taking a look at someone's project when it gets to a certain stage and you know, finding out more and asking them the questions and and it can come across as a little uh domineering, as a little uh too much in your face. I'm not trying to be discouraging. I'm trying to be encouraging. But given my role and given my title, I have to kind of downshift here a little bit and and, and back off of it. Uh, But good top-notch innovation leaders hate seeing ideas languish. Hate it. I hate it when an idea, a great idea, you know, come is 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 developed, and you know, you give it a green light, and you say, "Okay, let's go do this." And then you come back, you know, two months, three months, four months later, and you go, "Okay, where's it at?" And you go, "Oh, we we haven't got to it yet because we've had these three other things pop up." That that is probably the most frustrating thing for me as an innovation leader. I lean towards, like all innovation, most innovation leaders do, towards action. So, you know. I hate seeing ideas language where just the proper action, the proper next step is not being taken. This is letting an idea suffer uh, a natural death of neglect. And there is nothing worse than that. Nothing. So number six is that orientation towards action. Take action. Take that next step. That's what top-notch innovation leaders do. Number seven. Active collaborator, not just a collaborator, but an active collaborator. A collaborative leader creates a company culture that yields trust, mutual respect, shared aspiration, in which all of the members, all of the teams across the entire organization, sole focus is to fulfill one mutual goal. Launch this product. Build this new service. Put a man on the moon. Whatever it is, that is an active collaborator. Creates that company culture. Innovations are not the result of a lone genius. Innovation is a team sport. Ideas that come from the collaborative sharing of ideas can give rise to this continual innovation, this constant flywheel of innovation coming about. And this can propel organizations to unbelievable heights if you can get this collaboration correct. And it's absolutely critical because, again, innovation by itself is is a team sport. You cannot, it's not the sole, you know, genius coming up with it. It takes collaboration and it takes collaboration from across the organization. It's not just the technical resources, but that includes, you know, finance and legal and sales and marketing and HR. Everybody has to come together to make that thing successful. Whatever that thing is, it requires the collaboration of the entire organization. You know, if you're working in technology and, you know, the engineering team needs something, and they need uh, the finance team procurement to turn it around really quickly to keep the project on track, right? Well, if you've developed a collaboration, finance knows that this is time sensitive. They hop on it. They get it done. They get that procurement, gets that piece, 
the piece of technology or that widget in in time to keep the project going. You drive alignment, you drive collaboration. And an innovation leader isn't sitting back waiting for people to come to them to collaborate. You as an innovation leader, you it's an active collaborator. You're reaching out. You are building that trust. You are willing to share that credit. You are willing to invite them in. You are encouraging them to participate. You are being transparent with every piece of information you've got. You're sharing everything so everybody knows exactly what's going on. That is what I mean by being an active collaborator. Number eight, and that is the innovation leaders, The character, one characteristic of top-notch in, innovation leaders is willing to break the rules. Willing to break the rules. Good, top-notch innovation leaders understand that always following the rules can become rigid, and it puts everybody in a rut. If you do it the exact same way every time, you've, you're in a rut. Innovation requires having some fun, bending the rules. Innovation leaders seek to generate insight and knowledge through non-traditional ways. You know, whether that's experimentation or exploration or... Uh, improvisation, breaking the rules. I mean, one of the things that um, I used to do, I haven't done this in a while, probably been four or five years, and that is I used to, you know, take the summer off and I would do what I call a trend safari. So a trend safari is going around different parts of the world and looking at emerging trends. This was much more important when I was the uh, chief technology officer for Hilo Packard looking at consumer trends, looking at design trends. You know, every year I would go to the Hanover Furniture Fair in Hanover, Germany. It's the big furniture fair. And furniture, what people put into their houses, translates into technology that people are willing to put into their house. What should that look like? How does what you're designing going to mesh with what the, the furniture that people are going to be putting into the homes looks like? Those types of things. And then I would go to... Uh, Japan, Australia. Uh, I'd go to uh, you know Italy for uh, uh, fashion week. You know, you know, all over looking at trends. What are the new emerging trends? But it was a way to have some fun and kind of break the rules. You know, people think, well, you know, you're designing a laptop. It looks like this, and you know, the thing that you're left with design is what color do you want to make it? You want it blue? You want it red? You want it pink? What is it? But, you know, I, I was always the believer, let's break the rules. The rules, the assumptions, the way things are always done in an industry, um, those rules are just screaming to be broken. Break the rules. Getting Finding an innovation leader or you becoming that innovation leader to be willing to break the rules. Do things differently not the way they have always been done. And number nine, keen observation. Not just noticing things, but deep, deep observation. Keen observation. A keen observer, they look deeply at the situation and they perceive new patterns and new details. Now, I consider myself a pretty good observer, but like, when I would take these trend safaris, I would bring people along because I, they would notice things that I wouldn't notice. I would bring along people who are graphic artists or architects um, or musicians or uh, authors. You know, people tend to be, you know, the people I would take with me on a trend safari were the creatives, but then I would, they would notice things because of their perspective. I would, latch on to their observations because they're going to pick up something that I would overlook. And that played another important role in this uh, activity of the trend safari and being a keen observer. The ability to notice things that, you know, have gone on unnoticed, you know, helps innovation leaders, whether it's me because I take these people with me or just my own skills, you know, to make, you know, some assessments and figure out some new ideas, some new innovations. How do you solve the problem of technology in the living room or uh, wearable uh, devices to improve health or whatever, right? 
the assessments, the the ability to be that keen observer is is a skill set that an innovation leader needs to have, needs to foster. You need to constantly work at it. It's something that is absolutely critically important for the innovation success. So in conclusion, you know, business leaders must remove the inertia barrier as the first step. Leaders need to embrace innovation. You can go find all the people that have these nine characteristics of innovation leadership, right? These are, you know, if you find somebody that's got all nine, man, hire the person. You know, you're probably not going to find someone that's got all nine, right? But you want to have some really key strengths and you don't want any deficiencies. But before you even get to that, as business leadership, the top notch leaders in an organization have to remove that inertia, the inertia barrier as the first step. Now, to do this, you got to start at the top and they have to be welcoming and supporting new and more innovative, innovative ways of thinking. They've got to be open to innovation. And it's not a buzzword and it's not the, um, you know, how many times you put it in the shareholder letter and the annual report. This has to be something that's truly passionate from top leaders. Otherwise, your leaders that have these nine characteristics will get frustrated and won't hang around. You know, you may not hang around inside your organization if you're not getting the support of your top leaders. Leadership must lead with bold, creative ideas first. They, must, they need to find, you know, my advice to CEOs who are trying to really kickstart their innovation efforts is, is go around and find an idea that's already percolating. Go find, you know, that idea that's kind of hidden. You know, my HP days, um, I just got appointed as the CTO. I'm in the process of standing up what became known as the Innovation Program Office. But I needed a couple of wins. I needed a couple of innovations that were going to kind of put the message out that HP was going to be different about innovation. We were going to be willing to put our money where our mouth is and put people's, you know, commit resources, people, time, energy to go uh, take ideas and bring them forward. So I was getting, we were going to do a, a due diligence on a possible acquisition, standing at the airport. Introduced myself to the other a couple of other people from the HP team going down to be part of this process and uh, got introduced to a gentleman, Tom Saliga. So I introduced myself as the new CTO and then I asked him, I said, So, what project are you working on right now that your manager has no idea you're working on? You know, what's that secret project under your desk that you're working on that your manager has? No idea. And he kind of startled and looks at me and he goes, are you serious? I go, yeah. What, what's, the, what's the project that you're working on that nobody knows about? And he got really excited and he tells me about this project. He was, he'd been stealing parts out of the parts cabinets. He snuck a, a circuit board build into the, into, the, uh, into the fab line to get a custom, custom motherboard built and, you know, built up this PC that had unbelievable performance, but was finally, finally, finally tuned to be a superior gaming PC. And I'm like, really? You know, so he shared with me the, the, the characteristics and the speed and the performance, the metrics, what stage it was at, etc. So we get on the plane and a bunch of executives are on this flight and we're chatting away as we're flying from uh, San Jose airport to San Diego. And before we landed in San Diego, I got one of the EVPs to, to approve $3 million to go into proof of concept phase on an idea that I got pitched 30 minutes ago, standing in San Jose. And we went off and we built this product. It ultimately became what was now referred to as the HP Blackbird. And it launched the entire HP gaming PC line. And I'm a, I classify myself as above average uh, leader. Um, what did I do when I started the innovation program office? I moved Tom Saliga into the IPO. So he was part of the team 
working on noodling, experimenting on new ideas um, and giving him the freedom to go work on things that he had the, the time to think about. But again, it, this is a leader. This was huge because I got a quick win. I could quickly point to an output from an innovation program office on a product that ultimately Blackbird won every prize the year it was released from every major publication for product of the year. Every one. And it's the only product HP has ever had in its entire history that won every award from every publication that year. and. Uh, and that helped put the innovation efforts on the map, and it got the notice of everybody inside of HP to say, wow, if they're willing to put money and do those kinds of things, then maybe they'll like my idea, or how do I get involved and maybe uh, get transferred to the innovation program office to work on um, on my idea, those types of things. So my suggestion to leaders is, if you're trying to stand up a new leadership effort and you've got a... Uh, a leader that has these characteristics, you know, support them, give them the people time and money and get the heck out of the way, but help them get some of those early wins that transforms the culture that reinforces that the the culture really is in support of creating innovation. So again, leadership must lead with bold creative ideas. First, you got to get those early wins up on the scoreboard. And if you do that, this will inspire that spark that can spread into a uh, a cultural change, a cultural shift that will prepare your organization to be able to deliver innovations that can change your organization and let you win in the highly competitive markets you are going after. So how did you stack up on all of those characteristics for innovation leaders? Now, you're never going to find somebody that has all nine and knocks all nine of them out of the park, right? We're all human. We have strengths, weaknesses, um, et cetera. And there's always areas that you can work on, that I can work on, right? And it's... Um, you know, the, uh, the, and they vary depending on our background, our experiences, the organization you're in, the culture you're trying to operate in, all can have an impact. In my case, probably the one that I have to constantly work at and constantly strive for. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's one that I think innovation leaders in general probably should spend more time on. And that is being an active collaborator. Not sitting back and waiting for someone to approach to me and say, hey, I hear you're working on an interesting project. Can I collaborate with you? Invite people to collaborate with you. Don't wait for them to offer to collaborate. Invite them to collaborate. You know, be active. We sometimes get just so busy in our projects and our activities that we don't reach out. We're just heads down with our team. And we're going to knock this thing out of the park. And we forget about the fact that even within your own team, you do not have all the expertise and resources you need. So active collaboration, that's the one that uh, I constantly have to remind myself that I need to work on. With that, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to the show. We do value your time greatly and hope that you find the content we produce and the information we share, finding it useful for you, your career the next step in your, your career progression or in what you're doing day to day, wherever you might be. We'd love to have hear your feedback, post a review of the show, wherever you get your podcast, drop us a note. You can send me an email directly at phil at killerinnovations.com. Post your comments over on any of the social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, et cetera. Uh, LinkedIn and Instagram probably being one of the more active ones that we uh, that we post to, uh, but uh, love to hear your feedback, your comments, become part of the conversation. You can also hop over to the innovators.network, the innovators.network. That is the innovators community. It's made up now. We're probably a couple hundred innovators. So these are chief innovation officers or innovation leaders from around the world. So it's an opportunity for you to 
to go visit there, collaborate, ask questions, get input, get thoughts, share your own expertise. So uh, check out that. Uh, and with that, again, the other favor I would ask is, is help us spread the word. Let other people know about uh, the show. Uh, that could be your team inside the organization that you're working in. It could be uh, leaders who you think might benefit, particularly from last week's show and this week's show, given it's a it's a two-part uh, episode on leadership, innovation leadership specifically, um, or um, you know, just helping us spread the word on whatever platform you are active on. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It helps me uh, meet the objectives, the commitment I made to my original mentor, Bob Davis, you know, many, many years ago, that I could not pay him back for the investment that he made in my career, but that I can invest in other people's career. And my investment in your career is this show. So thank you for taking the time. Hopefully you found it beneficial. Hopefully it helps you uh, become more successful in your career and uh, would love to hear back from you. So let me know. And with that, have a great week. Take your ideas and go change the world. Bye-bye. Podcasting nonstop since 2005, this has been the Killer Innovation Show on the Innovators Network. This show is distributed by the Innovators Network. For more information and other great shows and content, visit theinnovators.network.